top 10 open world games you can play on PS4. Ask anyone why they play games and escapism is going to be a pretty popular answer. And for me, there is no escape quite like falling into a sprawling, immersive open world. So if you're looking to lose yourself in the clean air of PS4's great outdoors, here's a list of 10 fantastic games sure to sate your wanderlust. We've got a self-imposed rule of only one game per series, and the list is in no particular order. There are many different reasons we love open world games. The thrill of exploration, unrivaled gameplay freedom, and, as is the case with our first entry, super heroic traversal. Marvel Spider-Man has no equal when it comes to getting about New York. Sure, you can fast travel and enjoy Spidey on the subway, but to be honest, I rarely did that in my playthrough. Flinging yourself through the gorgeous urban jungle of Manhattan is so exhilarating, you just won't want to travel any other way. The New York of Marvel Spider-Man is essentially your playground. A huge expanse of gleaming skyscrapers just begging you to sprint up them, dive off, and then string together a balletic sequence of swings and aerial pirouettes as the evening sun glares and the music soars. It just feels incredible. The team at Insomniac has absolutely nailed Spider-Man's elastic grace. A number of times my stomach dropped in real life, coming to the peak of a swing before plunging back to the streets below. Open world traversal just doesn't get any better than this. After years of honing their craft with the visually incredible Killzone games, Guerrilla Games delivered an absolute original with our next entry, Horizon Zero Dawn. The game is a success on so many levels. The setup drips with intrigue, a world overrun with creature-like machines, with tribes of humans living among the ruins of a once great civilization. Our supremely calm and capable hero Aloy is brought to life by a perfectly measured and convincing performance by Ashley Birch. The world itself, surprising no one who's played the Killzone series, is a constant jaw-dropper. Vividly imagined scenes of Earth, reclaimed by nature, brought to life by the kind of tech that has you pressing the photo mode button every three minutes. Put all that together with the kind of rich, compelling story few open world games manage to pull off, and battles against the towering machines featuring intricately articulated physics, and Horizon Zero Dawn emerges as one of PS4's most accomplished titles. Our next entry is Skyrim, and I've tried for years to pin down and articulate what makes this world so endlessly explorable and why it's such a joy to simply exist within it to no avail. There's a soul and an essence to this place that seems to evade any attempt to ensnare it with language. Skyrim as a place has grown beyond its coded source and sort of taken root in our collective cultural consciousness. I remember Skyrim in the same way I remember places I used to go on holiday as a child. The physical forms of the trees, rivers and mountains, on their own, less relevant than the emotional response they elicit. But even if you're new to Skyrim, it is a world just begging to be explored. I've played this game on and off for the best part of a decade and am still discovering things even now. This is an open world you can both endlessly explore and always return to. Absolute magic. 
Witcher 3 is one of those games matched perhaps only by Skyrim on this list, where the immersion of the world isn't just about the geography of it all, the towns, forests and hidden caves. Oh, shall I try and climb that mountain? It's about a sense of place that's deeper than marks on a map, a world of meaning and possibility, an attitude of storytelling that's transportive in that way so few things are once we slip out of childhood. With The Witcher, there's a canny folk sensibility to its time, place and politics. War touches everything, armies mass at borders, the dead fill the fields, and their bodies feed monsters that lurk in the shadows. As Geralt, you stand apart from this conflict, or at least try to, grimly plying your trade as a monster slayer for hire. The arid wit of Andrzej Sapkowski's stories preserved faithfully in this new tale about the search for your adoptive daughter Ciri and the coming battle against the riders who call themselves the Wild Hunt. The open world plays a huge part in what makes The Witcher essential. Galloping over a storm-swept hill at sundown, investigating an abandoned ruin, sailing the crags of the Skellig Isles. These are the things fantasy epics are built from, but the real magic is how the world supports and brings alive a place and a way of being that seems like it was just waiting to exist all along. Next up, we've got Red Dead Redemption 2, an enormous, intimidatingly beautiful open world with a depth and richness of detail that quite frankly blows our minds. Red Dead 2 is a game that wants you to soak up its world at every opportunity. The game rolls along at a pleasingly slow pace, life's smaller pleasures like the sound of a stream chattering over the rocks, the echo of an eagle's cry as it cracks around empty mountain air, the pleasing clip-clop of your horse's hooves crunching through the soil. Being in the world of Red Dead 2 is as much a part of playing the game as all the shootouts and street brawls, and in terms of just relaxing, whether you're fishing, rowing, or simply camping out and staring at the stars, nothing comes close to Rockstar's masterpiece. You can practically taste the fresh air in your lungs, smell the pine trees, feel the invigorating icy touch of that water. Wonderful. Our next entry, Days Gone, is a fresh take on a crowded genre. The game's post-apocalypse has survivors living in camps and moving through the world on customised drifter bikes. Mad Max meets Sons of Anarchy, Second Amendment-loving outlaws inheriting the beautiful wilds of the Pacific Northwest. It's a compelling setup, and that's before we get to the game's real star, which are the Freakers, the emaciated, shrieking infected who roam the open world in persistent hordes. These hordes are a technical marvel, a seething mass of hundreds of individual bodies swarming and charging, unlike anything we've ever seen. And crucially, they make for brilliant, unique gameplay. Desperate encounters full of tricks, traps, endless rounds of ammunition, and above all, lots of running away. Yakuza 0 is next on our list. We could easily have included any of the games from Sega's Incredible Crime Saga, but we've gone with Zero as it's the best place to start if you're a newcomer and features an open world that may not be as massive as others on this list, but what Camarocho and Sotombori lack in size, they make up for in character, detail and the sheer endless number of things to do and places to explore. These areas are stylized, fictional recreations of Tokyo's Kabukicho and Osaka's Dotonbori, and if you've been to either of those in real life, you'll know Sega has just nailed it. The way you've got cafes, bars, shops, all sort of 
tucked away and layered on top of one another, how the place morphs in front of your eyes as day becomes night, almost like the city is breathing in and out. The phrase living world is used a lot when describing games like this, but Yakuza 0 really does feel lived in. You know, you get the sense this place would carry on regardless of your presence and all the things you can do in this place. Karaoke, running a cabaret club, underground fighting, pocket racing, I don't even know what that is, real estate management, dancing, you will never be bored in the world of Yakuza Zero. Adventure. That feeling of discovering something for the first time. One of the many reasons open world games feel so magical. And in terms of pure, raw, unapologetic adventure, games don't come much better than Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Exploring this gigantic slice of ancient Greece is something else, especially now the series has ripped free from the shackles of historical accuracy and infused its worlds with the fantastic. This place combines everything that's good about Assassin's Creed. You've got bustling city hubs perfect for vertical stealth and then gorgeous stretches of lush countryside that give way to rolling open ocean. And you can explore every inch of it, sailing, climbing, hunting down horrible cultists, all tied together with a compelling story and the most likeable protagonist since the iconic Ezio Auditore graced our PS3s over a decade ago. If you want a game that you can dive deep into and explore at your leisure for hundreds of hours that offers beauty, variety and mystery in equal measure, then get Assassin's Creed Odyssey in your PS4. GTA V recently became the largest grossing entertainment product of all time which is probably a bigger seal of approval than us listing the ways it's really, really, really good. But here we go anyway. GTA V is really, really, really good because nobody brings a sense of depth and detail of warping the real world into a magic virtual box and caging it inside your PS4 the way Rockstar does. The first few hours of playing any GTA game are getting your head around the fact that it just exists. I guess this is possible now then, you tell yourself as you drive through what's effectively a real city, fly over it just to make sure, and then stare in close up at the concrete to marvel at the accurate textures. And then there's the story, this time a rampant, raging three-way tug of war designed to showcase the best and worst of the world Rockstar has conjured. And then, and then, there's GTA Online, a never-ending spiral of new things to do, a playground of speed and destruction, and staring at concrete. Last, but not least, Death Stranding the most unique open world you will ever experience. For starters, it's eye-meltingly beautiful. The first time I saw this bleak, melancholic landscape, I was floored. Death Stranding wants you to connect to this world. This isn't just a big bowl of mountains and rivers you whiz through on your way somewhere else. This is a place you'll get to know intimately. Traversing it, one foot in front of the other, scaling cliffs, wading across rivers. There's a deliberateness to it, a slow, meditative quality that draws your focus to the here and now. You'll become aware of your every footstep, your breath hanging in the cold air. You can feel the elements in Death Stranding and it's just incredible. Also, it's a wonderful playground for those times when you do want to think about other things like sneaking up on mules, for instance, and stealing their trucks. But yes, if you're after an open world experience that places no limits on where you can go and truly conveys the breathless wonder and power of nature, 
then Death Stranding is the one. So.